Are you a rental property owner who's tired of going into your bank account for every single complaint that a tenant brings to you? Have you thought maybe some of those complaints seem like they were brought on by the tenants themselves? Have you been thinking maybe should some of those complaints and expenses be charged to the tenants instead of to you as the property owner? If those are some of the questions that you're having as a property owner, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Albert with Capital Street Management, a property management company servicing Essex and Union counties here in New Jersey and surrounding areas as well. As a landlord, it's usually not a good experience when you get a request from a tenant for a maintenance repair or when that request is asked to be taken care of immediately. Now, as a landlord, it's understood that your responsibility is to take care of the general maintenance and requests for repairs. However, some of those maintenance requests and repairs can be the responsibility of your tenants. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and outline six of those repairs that are generally the responsibility of tenants to take care of instead of you as a landlord. Number one, light bulbs and HVAC filters. Now, generally, these items are the responsibility of the tenant to replace unless otherwise stated in your lease. It's usually common knowledge, but as a property manager, you can just imagine some of the phone calls that we get, all of which of those calls are accepted, by the way. Number two, unclogging drains that the tenant has clogged themselves. Now, if a tenant has caused the, the drain to be clogged and whether the sink or the toilet, it should be their responsibility to take care of it. And based off of your lease, you can require them to take care of it themselves, or you can require them to reach out to you to, to have it taken care of professionally. We recommend the latter. Number three, pest infestations. Now, assuming that your tenant moved into a unit that had no issues and was noted on the moving inspection, your tenant should be expected to pay for that fee for the exterminator if there are any issues with bugs or pests or anything of that nature. Generally, from the exterminator report, you'll be able to see the cause of the issue. And if that cause is deemed by any living habits or untidiness by that tenant, they should indeed be responsible for those charges. Number four, damage to the property due to the tenant's negligence. Now, not just the tenants themselves, but their family, friends, children, anyone who they've invited into the property. Now, ideally, it would go as this. Damage was done, the tenant pays for it, everything's taken care of. But in some situations, tenants want to deny, you know, their cause or what actually happened. In this situation, the accident moving inspection that we mentioned in step three, you go ahead and reference that moving inspection. Hey, when you moved in, this wasn't an issue. Now it's an issue, you caused the issue, you're responsible for this fee based off of the clauses in your lease. There you have it, taken care of. Number five, holes in the wall from shelving, pictures, TV mounts, those things that tenants kind of hang up there when they just move in, kind of forget about until it's time for them to move out. Where we've seen landlords get stuck is, let's say your tenant's moving out, they've been great, they've paid on time. They ask to have their security deposit sent to them a few weeks before they move out, and in good faith, you go ahead and say yes. When they actually do get that TV off the wall and that mount down, those holes, that paint that's shipped, who's paying for it now? You don't have a security deposit, the tenant's gone, that's your responsibility. Number six, anything else that was mentioned in the lease. As a rental property owner, your lease should be stellar. You wanna make sure that you have that reviewed by an attorney if possible, ideally. Don't go for those one and a half page leases that you find online that you think's a quick fix, outlines the rent, the security deposit, when it's due, when it's late. That's usually not enough. Most, if not all issues in regards to landlord tenant responsibility should be outlined in this document. Make sure that you keep this nearby so when any issue arises, you can always reference back to it to determine if you are actually responsible financially for what is taking place or the tenant is financially responsible for what has taken place. Once that lease is signed by both parties, that's the law. You shouldn't give any wiggle room to anything that comes up, follow your lease. And again, this is the reason why you wanna make sure that lease is fully detailed. Don't go for those one and a half pagers. As a landlord, it's always good to make sure that your lease is tidied up and taken care of to make sure that you're not exposed to any unnecessary liabilities, especially in a, in a tenant friendly state such as New Jersey. If you're a rental property owner here in the state of New Jersey and you're worried about if your lease is ironclad or if you're fully protected by all liabilities, go ahead and download this free resource below. It's the three clauses that should be included in every New Jersey residential lease. Again, let me mention I'm not an attorney, I'm just a property manager. 
And these three clauses are in our lease. So if you want to go ahead and add it to yours, by all means, go ahead. Ideally, you know, you want to look over these three, speak to your attorney and see how they can add them in or best fit them into your lease as it stands now. This resource is completely free and you can go ahead and download it by clicking the link below. I hope this video answers some of your questions as a rental property owner in regards to what expenses you can charge your tenants for and which ones are your responsibility. I'm Albert Myers with Capital Street Management and thanks for watching this video.